Hello everyone and welcome to another episode. I promise you that I will bring you the best from the best <laughs> of the fandom and BDSM community so I'm always keeping my word. You know, if I say something, I mean that. So, today I'm having the privilege of interviewing Mistress Valeska or Hello. Lady Valeska. What, what, what and either, prefer? either. I'm not actually that particular, but, but yeah, either Mistress Valeska or Lady Valeska. Thank you very much for accepting this invitation. Thank you for having and me. And thank you for accepting and allowing me and also the, the viewers to get to know you a little bit more. Thank you. Compare with the image that you have, you have such a beautiful and strong image. I'm curious to see what is behind that. Excellent. I, I, I actually commend you that you're doing this. I think that this is a very um, educational and enlightening thing for other submissives, but also other dominant women. I think it's all very important. So thank you for having me. Thank you very much uh, also. So I will start with a very simple, basic question, but uh, in my perspective, one that is very important. Who are you? Oh, the person you. Um, I am a very passionate person, um, but actually, I, I, um, I enjoy having lots of fun. I know, what, like you said, as dominatrices <laughs> come as across as these, um, uh, ag not aggressive, but uh, st uh, stern. stern people. And uh, actually, I, I have lots and lots of fun when I'm when I'm playing, but also just in my personal life as well. Um, I. I enjoy experiencing life, um, if that makes sense. I enjoy exploring new places, trying new things, meeting new people. Um, I want to. I, I, I'm like a sponge, and I like to soak it all in. <laughs> I know you for quite some time already, and I can totally understand what you're coming from and what you're saying because you are always so energetic, so bubbly. Let's do that. Let's do that. And always, you are doing something. Yes. I cannot stop but ask, from where do you get all your energy? Uh, well, I'm actually quite introverted. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the <laughs> Yeah. So, as much as I expend lots of energy when I'm in social settings, um, I also take days on my own doing, well, not absolutely nothing, but not very much. Not very much. Um, but I, I really enjoy my alone time. Um, and that's what uh, energizes me to be able to do mm. and uh, be sociable and do all these things. Um, so you also you're taking your time to recharge. The absolutely. Self-care mm. is so, so important to me and I'm a big advocate for it for everyone. I think with sex work, we, the hustle is, is yes. extreme and intense and everyone feels like they need to be doing things, being there, taking pictures, th being on this platform, da 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 da, da. Um, and it's so important to be looking after yourself and what your soul needs, mm -hmm. and, and um, I think that, uh, yeah, just, um, looking after yourself is just so, so it's, important. It's important to take care of yourself and not to forget to take time for yourself, yeah. because in, in our industry, you can easily forget about 100%, yourself. Absolutely. There's always something new to do. There's always a new project, a new event, a new a new something. Yeah. And um, what do you like to do in in your you and yourself time? Okay. What do you like to do? What is do you have any specific things that you're doing? Absolutely. So um, I have a dog, and my dog is is my What's life. his name? Chico. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he is, he's my, oh, he's not my best friend, but he, he is a great companion. Um, but because of that, um, I've actually really gotten into hiking. I really enjoy. Um, I've seen that on the um, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I enjoy being out in nature. I enjoy, um, yeah, I actually, I went on a like walking tour in Ireland last summer. Um, for my 40th birthday, I uh, rented a cabin and I just, Stayed there for a few days with my dog, and I didn't see anybody. Wow. I didn't have a party. I didn't do anything like that. I I, I love being with nature. Um, I'm I'm very drawn to the water. Um, I went to Thailand for a month in January, and um, I just stayed on the beach for the whole month, and I didn't do anything touristy. I just I just enjoyed just soaking all that in. Um, I love reading, um, but I also, on the other side, uh, even as much as I enjoy fetish parties and that kind of thing, I actually really enjoy going to concerts and mm. I enjoy music, music for me. What, what is your favorite uh, genre of um, music? What do you often 
listen, listen to. Um, more industrial, heavy rock kind of music. Okay. Um, and I just I enjoy going to festivals and, and and that kind of thing. So I do actually still have that outlet with with uh, being extroverted with, mm -hmm. with that kind of stuff. Um, but for me, the grounding and um, I guess you get back to your soul is, is, is the hiking and being in nature and that kind of thing. So um, let's start with the beginning. Okay. How was your childhood? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> let's remember the old day. Um, how was my childhood? I, it was it was difficult. Like for me, it was difficult. Um, my parents got divorced when I was early, when I was young. Um, I was the eldest um, daughter. Mm -hmm. um, I had a, a lot of responsibility, um, and my parents put a lot of that on me, even as a child. Right. And I found that um, I found that to be quite difficult. Um, I struggled in school and that kind of thing. Um, why, why were you struggling in school? Um, I think school. I think the the industry of school um teaches people in a certain manner and if you don't understand in that manner then um you're a failure or or mm -hmm. you won't succeed i'm more of a visual learner um and i, I worked very hard but I, I i didn't really get very good grades but um but it also made me a hard worker like as much as um my little sob story um it, it made me a very hard worker and um i'm very driven mm -hmm. and so those things do end up being a, a positive yeah. as you become older in life so it all depends uh, on your perspective and sometimes uh, a negative thing can be turned into a positive Absolutely. thing. Absolutely, one hundred percent. What Absolutely. about the the adolescents? The, how uh, are you as a teenager? Well, um, I, I I gravitated towards more alternative um, type people. Um, I, I got into the goth mm -hmm. scene, and um, how did you get into that? Goth scene? I, um, I loved that, um, but in a in a, in a more romanticish. Shit. Yes. Way, yeah, romantic. Um, I, I not for me it wasn't very that romantic. It was more just music. I mm -hmm. think, um, and then with music, um, because it's the type of uh, bars that you would go to to enjoy that music, mm -hmm. and then you meet people through that. Um, I think the whole when I was a teenager, dressing in black, and and you you. Um, you, you segregate yourself from kind of the yeah, rest so of the group cool. kind of thing, the, the cool kids mm -hmm. and, and that kind of stuff. Um, but, uh, but I, but you know, my parents thought it was a phase. Well, I'm 40 and I'm still, I'm still, I'm still it's doing it. So it's not, it's not a phase, style. it's a lifestyle. Yeah. Exactly. It's a lifestyle. Um, but it's something that I, I find the goth community very warm and welcoming. And Surprisingly, because if you look from uh, from outside perspective, they tend to be like very uh, distant, yes. very cold, very just like BDSM in yes, a way. Yes, absolutely. You yeah. know, but which is totally wrong. Yes, yeah, absolutely. I I, I think um, there is a, a slight apprehension to people that are new into the scene because people are worried that you're a tourist and mm -hmm. you're just. Uh, trying to either gawk or make fun mm -hmm. of or, or whatever. But I think once um, you kind of push through that barrier, it's all welcome arms and yes. from and, and it's a it's a very loving community where you can be empowered mm -hmm. for being different. Right. And I think that's wonderful. <laughs> how did you how did you start the or how did you discover BDS? Let's take that journey. Again, actually, through the goth scene, there is there is actually um, it tra like the goth fetish scene. It, those those types of people kind of um, waver in and out mm -hmm. quite easily. So through um, uh, meeting people through the goth scene, I heard about these fetish parties, found them quite interesting, or or, or I was curious about them, mm -hmm. um, and then um, I ended up uh, getting a boyfriend who was kinky, and then he ended up showing me some kinky things, and, I would, and then once that happened, mm -hmm. I, I just dove in like Open crazy. Open the Pandora's Absolutely! I, I got my first latex dress, and then it just went, I went crazy from there. And... Describe me your first latex dress. How, <laughs> how did it look like? Um, it was black, um, halter top, mm -hmm. um, short, um, with red ruffles kind of uh, along the seams. Um, I looked very cute in it. it was really you cool. always look very cute. You're, <laughs> you're unique, and that's one of the things that I admire in you. Uh, you're you. 
yeah yeah and you don't try to copy you don't try to uh, it's like you, you send this vibe this is why I'm yes Yes. Oh, thank, thank you. you. I appreciate and that. I, I, I admire you for that. And at the same time, I cannot stop to, to question uh, and to wonder, have you faced any adversities because of this? Um, I, I, like, uh, I, I'd maybe say small adversities um, in terms of how people react to you mm -hmm. on the street. Um, yeah, just more when you're kind of in general society. Mm -hmm. I, I would say that they're... Um, you know, people maybe make rude comments or stare at you yeah. or that kind of thing. Um, but I do actually find it a struggle, um, especially with what I do for as a profession when it comes to dating. Um, How is that? Let's talk not about very good. Okay. <laughs> I, I told you, I understand what you're saying. You know, like, ex give me some details. Um, I, I find men uh, just don't know how to handle it. They don't know... Um, how to handle uh, being partners with a sex worker. Um, even kinky people, mm -hmm. I find, or even kinky poly people, it, it, it kind of brings you to a different level that people just don't know how to um, be open-minded. Um, mm -hmm. I find, uh, especially like dating apps are a bit of the, the worst kind of, people to kind of deal with because when you're texting and you've never even met the person I'm very honest I tell people exactly what I do and um, yeah men just don't know how to how to handle what was the yeah. funniest reaction <laughs> dating wise yeah. that, that you had oh I just I think the moment that I've told someone that that, that I'm a dominatrix they kind of flip the conversation and immediately start out like, what's your favorite sex position then? And, and yeah, and I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Yes, yes. Yes, exactly. Um, it, it, I, I, it, people actually, I find maybe become a bit aggressive or a bit too personal. Mm -hmm. um, like I, I'm all for having an open conversation, um, but I think there's a level that you, as you get to know someone, your, right. your level of intimacy or, or um, divulging uh, personal things about yourself that 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 is something that you gradually get to you know step by step yeah, yeah. and yeah. once you're once you tell someone that, that, that you're a sex worker they just think that you're a complete open book that you can ask them absolutely any question any person like really personal mm -hmm. question and that's where I kind of get um, and how does that makes you feel when you're experiencing mm -hmm. this kind of uh, attitude shifts yeah how does it makes you feel how does it make me feel um objectified um like i'm a novelty mm -hmm. um that i'm not a person you know that i don't have actual feelings that i'm not um tender and and um and and in need of support as well mm -hmm. um and love and 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 all those good things like um you become completely sexualized and and it's like you're you're forgotten that you're an actual person. Like the interest towards your persona is yeah. stops in the moment that they hear that you are in this industry and yeah. you have this activity. Yes. Yeah. Right. It's like they forget just kind of everything else mm -hmm. that, about you, mm -hmm. <laughs> and and I find that very frustrating. So I've actually taken quite a bit of a step back and just enjoying being myself on mm -hmm. my own and being empowered in that. And what is important for you to find within a man? Like, let's say um, there are probably a lot of men out there that will be interested in dating you. What are you searching for? I think the biggest um, thing for me is someone that can bring their own... Um, I, that's what I'm looking for. Um, bring their own... Um, I don't know what I'm looking with where it is I'm looking for, but... Uh, so I bring a lot to the table, and I want them to be able to bring just as much to the table. Like, be a partner, not just someone that is along for the ride. Someone that can, you know, reliable. Yeah, absolutely, everything. Whether and it's not just career. It's 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 um, personality. It's it's um, uh, self worth. You know, it's it's. Um, a complete person. Do, 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 All right. Yeah. Okay. Would you be able to have a relationship with a total vanilla man? Uh, I think it would be a struggle. Um, it wouldn't be an absolute no, mm -hmm. um, because if that person was completely open to what I d did as a profession, right. 
I still enjoy having kinky sex myself, so that would be something we would have to navigate. Like if I was in a poly relationship, then that would probably then I'd be able to find an outlet that way. Right. Um, it wouldn't be an absolute no, but it would be. It would yeah. be a, yeah, yeah, it would be a struggle. It would be a struggle, but you know, if that person was able to bring a lot of other things to the table that I, you know, I love to travel. So mm -hmm. if I had a traveling companion or if I was able to have someone that supported me emotionally uh, to a large extent, that kind of things are also very important. King is important, mm -hmm. but I think there's a lot of other elements right. that are important to a relationship. Right. Uh, how would you describe the woman that you are? Uh, would it be okay to disclosure your real name? Like, um, I don't, don't, don't want. Yeah, okay, fine. I don't want. Then that. I, will, I will stick with all the, the women that yeah, you are. Yes, yeah. Um, how would I describe the woman that I am? Um, well, like I said, introverted for sure. Um, I uh, I have a huge wanderlust. I, I have a huge passion for music. I'm a, I'm a passionate person. I can see. Yes. That. <laughs> um, yeah, no, very passionate person. But um, but also really enjoy my downtime as well. I'm a, I'm a bit of a, a, a bit of a mixed bag. But but um, I definitely keep people on their toes. That's for sure. Uh, but I'm also a very kind person, and I I love like I said, I love to laugh, and I I I, I enjoy finding joy in as much as, as many things as I can. Um, but I can easily become um, mad as well. <laughs> so. Look, looking back, and each time I met you, I don't think I ever seen you being serious. You are yeah, always that's very true. You are yeah. always laughing. Fair. You are always having fun. Yeah, that's very I, fair. I just can't like my image of you is not a Western face. She's like always with your smile. That's actually very true. Yeah, I would say that because even if if I am even like in a scene, if I'm if I if I am feeling stern, there ends up always being a moment where there's something where a submissive screws up or whatever. I'll end up laughing at mm. them or um, sometimes where you're just having a good time. Like I, I find sometimes even when I'm doing like a CP scene and I'm, I'm just having a good time it's fun I'm, I'm dancing in the corner while he's uh, you know on his knees in pain and and uh, yeah <laughs> can this smile be uh, a mask of yours also are you using Ooh. it as a mask hmm. that's a tough question Ooh, um I told you it's about knowing the woman yeah the absolutely the person behind the, the uh, I'm not gonna say but it's not because I'm I'm sure there's going to be an element mm -hmm. of um, it being some type of mask, but I I wouldn't say that I necessarily hide behind it. Um, um, I feel like I'm a quite genuine person, good or bad, whether mm -hmm. people like that or not. Um, uh, there's probably a small element of me hiding behind it, but overall, I, I would say no. Um, I am pretty vocal if there is something that I'm not enjoying or not okay with or don't right. approve of or whatever. Um, yeah, yeah. So maybe a 10% mask. <laughs> Sometimes I think it is necessary. I'm also a genuine person and most of the time I'm very outspoken. When I don't like something, yeah. regardless if I'm expressing it or not, it will be visible on my face. Yeah, or same, for very, the very much the same. For, for the majority of the time I'm gonna address it regardless. And sometimes uh, I had um, not necessarily issues, but the vibes that I was getting just because I'm genuine, they weren't the most positive. Have you experienced that also? Um, I would say yes, overall. Um, and how do you cope with that when, when you're getting this vibe? I don't always notice that I'm giving off that vibe, the, the you know, the resting bitch face um, thing that, that most women are, are, are accused of. Um, I don't always notice that happening. Um, sometimes, yes, for sure. And I, I use it to mm -hmm. my advantage right. um, so that you become unapproachable in certain situations. So it's like an, an armor, like, Absolutely. I don't like you stay away. Yes. So I'm yes. inviting you. Right? Absolutely. Like, I, I would definitely say that I use that um, face as a mask mm -hmm. or like as the armor yeah absolutely so this is 100 percent. you use this resting bitch face as a mask yes yeah mm -hmm. absolutely um and i'd like you like if you're if you're um upset about something it's very visible even if you're saying oh no i'm fine 
Um, facially, everyone mm-hmm. knows that you're not fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think it makes uh, me generally not very approachable. Mm-hmm. Um, I think some people have a hard time yeah, coming up to me or introducing themselves to me. Um, and I know with clients, you know, they'll, they'll, when they, before they first come to see me for a, like a new client to me, they generally think that I'm going to be this horrible person, but then I end up um, joking around with them and laughing around with them. Okay. And like, oh, okay, I mean, it's fine. It's not fine. Why do you think they have this impression? What what gives this impression? Um, I think my height is is one thing. I think uh, a tall How woman. Tall I'm six foot. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so there we go. <laughs> um, I think being tall. Um, I am uh, like I, I, I don't. I don't think I'm a big woman, but I have broad shoulders. I, I carry myself um, very straight, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, sorry, what was the question? <laughs> what, <laughs> what do you think it gives this impression? Oh, uh, yeah, it just, uh, I think the way that I carry myself definitely is, is um, a big reason. But I think also the fact that you're considered a dominatrix, you people automatically then go to that mindset okay. that you are a, a stern person and that you're a hard person. Um, uh, what else? I, don't, I do, well, I, I complain a little bit on Twitter, like in my posts and that kind of stuff, but I, I think I'm generally fairly friendly on, on Twitter and that kind of thing. I, I think sometimes people maybe haven't, maybe like if they purchase my clips, they, they'll know that I'm usually laughing or smiling on my clips. So mm-hmm. might be lack of education for okay. who I am. Perhaps. And sometimes what is inside them also depends Absolutely. on the, let's say that they are, can, can see you in a, in a different light. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And I have a lot of tattoos, so I think people Tell also... me about the tattoos. Oh. Tell me about the tattoos. What was your first tattoo? Um, uh... This one right here. Oh, <laughs> that's so I know. What does it represent? Does it has any meaning? Uh, a little bit. Um, I went with a friend and we went and got tattooed because she wanted to get a rose to commemorate the death of her mom. Mm-hmm. And so I went with her and I got a rose as well because that's what women do. They get they get roses. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so that was my first tattoo that I went got done. Are you a friend. flower type of woman? Do you I like do enjoy flowers. Flower? Yeah, okay. absolutely. And I, I, I buy myself bouquets of flowers. I, 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 I love to garden actually. Um, so yes, I, I actually really enjoy uh, flowers. I find them be- they're beautiful, R- roses especially. Um, yes, I'm a flower girl. Yes. <laughs> so so back to your tattoo. Yes. Um, tell me about it. Because I know that, and everyone that uh, is following you, all your fans know that you have a lot, mm-hmm. many of them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, how this this started? Was it something that you always wanted? That yes. you always like oh, tattoos and passionate about it? I love them. Or how did it start? Yeah, I, I, for as long as I can remember, I've loved tattoos and seeing uh, women like all covered in tattoos. Mm-hmm. I I think it's very attractive. Um, when I first started getting tattooed. Um, I always I wanted to get tattoos that had a lot of meaning to me, and um, I, don't, I had to think it over for a really long time. And um, but then as my career in, ta- in getting tattoos kind of went on, mm-hmm. there's only so much stuff that you have that has meaning. <laughs> and then I just started getting images that I enjoyed or that I that I like the look mm-hmm. of. Um, like my whole right leg, I just, I got tattooed during the pandemic. I, there wasn't much else to do. Tattoo parlors okay. were open. And so I just started putting stuff on because my Because why not? Just exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and I, like I said, I enjoy the, the, the way tattoos look. Um, and the more covered I, I'm becoming, the more that I'm loving my body and the more that I'm loving how I look. And, um, and it is quite addictive. So, so what is the goal? To have to be fully covered, uh, tattoos, yeah, uh, arms and legs for sure. Um, I have my lower back done, but not my upper back. I don't know if I'll do it because you can't actually see your back. Mm-hmm. So that's one thing I'm learning is like I, my favorite tattoo is on the back of my thigh, but I can never see it. Yeah, exactly. I can never Bring see it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't think I'll ever get anything on my face or my neck, and I don't think I'll do my chest either. But I, I do definitely want to get more done like um but i enjoy the whole process of getting tattooed i i enjoy finding images but even like um i enjoy the smell of the disinfectant 
I enjoy like actually the, literally getting tattooed. Um, it, you get a love, well, you almost get into like a subspace really. Like mm -hmm. it, it uh, you know, you got the adrenaline going and that kind of stuff. And um, I find it a challenge for if I can sit out and get tattooed for six hours. I'm really proud of myself. And wow, that's <laughs> patience. Yeah, that's. Patience. I watch movies. I watch movies. Okay. Yeah. So it's not. It, it's just more how much. How long can you tolerate the pain? Just like a submissive mm -hmm. would be when you're playing with them. And I'm like, how long? Talking can about it? submissive. Mm. Um, what is if you have any favorite type of submissive? Um, well, my big thing is latex. So for me, latex gimps are my probably, well, I love sissies as well. <laughs> and I, it's kind of, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's a bit, I guess, um, I think I like a submissive that transforms. Um, you know, um, the latex gimp is this kind of object. <laughs> Um, whereas a sissy, um, they're embracing their feminine side. Um, so I, I, I quite enjoy both those, um, those types of play and those types of, um, subs and the, that, the, the type of subs that, that get are attracted to that mm -hmm. fetish, like, you know, both of those fetishes. How, how does it, uh, feel for you when you're playing with sissies, for example, or cross dressers or, uh, how, how do you feel? Um, I enjoy actually how much they embrace their slutty self. Mm -hmm. um, so like the, the, the slutty versions, not yes. the Barbie doll version. But I, I, I like messing up their makeup when they're, okay. when they're all... <laughs> so starting with the Barbie doll and they end yeah, up to slutty. Exactly, okay. exactly. Um, I actually really enjoy um, uh, like having my strap on side. Like that for me is such a turn on. Um, I really enjoy it. So and sissies really gravitate mm -hmm. towards that kind of play. Yeah. Um, yeah. For me, when when I'm playing with them, it's just like I'm back to my childhood. I'm playing with my dolls, but this time I'm living dolls, oh, which is like okay, yeah, that's more, wonderful. You know? yeah. So that's why I, I ask, how is it from your perspective? And when you're playing with the with, with the latex, yes. Um, well, uh, the latex one, I, I love the objectification, mm -hmm. the the taking away their identity. Um, I really love playing with them in hoods. Um, I know a lot of people like eye contact. I generally don't. <laughs> um, Why is that? Can you explain? Again, the objectification. Okay. It, it, it takes away the human side of them. Mm -hmm. um, and there's this, this toy that I get to play with. And um, just the, that they're this kind of puddle that I get to do whatever I want with. And, 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 um, and, and because I love latex and with the, the smell and the texture and I enjoy breath play and those kind of all translate into each other. Um, yeah, yeah. So are you a lifestyle or this is just a job for you? Uh, a professional activity? I guess it, it's, that's a bit of a difficult question for me to answer because I've been single for so long mm -hmm. that I, I, I want to say that I'm lifestyle, but because I've been single for so long, okay. it, it makes you wonder, do you know what I mean? Um, so my last um, like lifestyle stuff was uh, three years ago. Mm -hmm. um, so I have had, like I have done the, done the lifestyle mistress thing, but because it's been a while, it, technically right now I'm just a, I'm just doing professional, but um, I do enjoy playing outside of, outside of work and um, I, do, I do enjoy having a submissive partner. Um, so your lifestyle? Yeah. As long yeah. as you're... Uh, it, as long it, as I can find a good partner. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm also single at, at the moment, but I'm lifestyle. I know that I will never be able to have uh, a relationship vanilla I had yes, before. Really. I was still being a, a dominant, but without actually being aware of it. Yeah, yeah. And and now it's just like I know exactly what I'm. I'm lifestyle. I cannot have normal regular vanilla relationship. No, no. That, that's not not for me. No, like I need to be in control of the situation. Mm -hmm. All this, all all of the situations. I need to be. In when control. did you started to? discover that you like BDSM? I think, or what, what is that uh, it made you take this journey? Okay. Open I, your eyes. I think I've always actually been a dominant woman. Um, you know, I, I used to get called a bitch all the time and, and people didn't understand why my boundary, I was so strong with my boundaries and yeah. <laughs> Good job. Great. And why, um, I, I didn't really compromise and and I 
Um, I wanted to be in control of the situations that I was confident in. And I think, I, I think kink ended up giving me this beautiful outlet or allowed me to embrace mm -hmm. myself and allowed me to... Um, the space. Yeah, to absolutely. And it was, it was so, so empowering. Like, I'm, I'm such a huge advocate for kink. Like, it, it completely changed my life and completely changed who I was as a person. I used to I be, totally relate with that. Yeah, I used to be such a timid person because so many people told me I was wrong and that I was... Um, doing things incorrectly and, and being so rude and 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 why do you were, why do you think they were saying this they were having this perspective because you weren't fitting to the social idea absolutely 100 percent. and i think there's also some um you know jealousy but they didn't understand why they were conforming why why they were doing what they were supposed to do yeah. but but why aren't you, you doing are free it? to be exactly life. and 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 i think they, you know, you sh you should be doing what society is telling you to do. Mm -hmm. Why are you not doing that? What is your perspective on this, on the on the society? Oh fuck that shit. <laughs> okay, okay, that said it all. <laughs> wow. I yeah, I'm uh, well, not I'm not a pro anarchy or anything, but uh, um, for me, it's ha your own happiness. Your own happiness that's that's what should be navigating mm -hmm. how you live your life and how right. you do things right. um what society says you're supposed to be doing who cares like honestly i i yeah have you, you looked at what society it looks like <laughs> I, I know, I know. I know. I, did you always have this perspective or it, it changed uh now that you are older and you have had through the BDSM, the possibility of having a different perspective. Absolutely, yeah. And yeah, kink completely allowed me to embrace who I was as a woman. Um, absolutely, yeah. I, I, um, I definitely, I was brought up that you, you, you abide by the societal mm -hmm. rules. Um, absolutely, and and no, kink, kink completely changed my my outlook. Um, and I'm, again, I'm so thankful for it too. Like, it, it's... was it was it difficult for you to explain to the people around you that uh, you have different perspective, you you are different? Was it like, was it challenging? I I have to say overall no. Or you did not explain. You were just like okay, whatever. A little bit, a little bit of that, but I think people just aren't surprised. Mm -hmm. You know, I um, I think the people that are in my life accept me for who I am, mm -hmm. um, and the more information I, I I tell them about myself or my point of view or whatever, um, people just aren't surprised. Mm -hmm. So I haven't had to give a disclaimer or mm -hmm. how, or or kind of be like, oh, this is how it is. It's it it was accepted because they've already accepted. Uh, they accepted me as a person. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I, I haven't had to do no, I haven't had to do too much of it, which is I'm I'm super thankful for. But I also have a very small group of friends because of it. I'm not a lot of people can accept it. Mm -hmm. So there's kind of so that. <laughs> how uh, how important would you say that the people that you surround yourself with are? Oh, very extremely important. Absolutely. Um, Again, going back to your own happiness, um, being around people that maybe don't agree with what I do or don't agree with how I think, those people uh, suck energy out of you. Mm -hmm. um, and I think being around people that love and support you will only make you love and support yourself more. And I wish it having was. having people that were supportive uh, did it help you through your journey in becoming the woman, the person that you are now? Oh, I'm sure it has. Yeah, absolutely. What um, was the main thing that uh, they help you with? Um, if you would to point to a, a certain thing, what what would that be? Um, I think uh, one of my uh, things that I have to work on regularly is actually turning my brain off. Sometimes I uh, an overthinker. Yes. Yes. Very much so. <laughs> so sometimes you just need to quiet that noise. And and uh, I've had friends, uh, some very important friends to me, um, uh, really enforce the fact mm -hmm. that you know get out of your head, be in the moment, right. and bring you to the present. Absolutely, like taking you back, uh, actually taking you out of your mind. Yeah. and making you uh, be be present. Yes, absolutely. And I I'm so thankful for those people that have, that have. 
encourage me in, in that journey. It's going to be a lifelong journey, but um, are they part of the community or are they they are not or uh, they are a mixture? Yeah, they're generally yes, they're they're part of the king community. I actually don't really have many uh, vanilla people that are that are in my life. Um, I think with me moving uh, to a different country uh, five years ago, you you end up unfortunately losing ties with. Um, you know the friends that you did have and then having to make new friends where you are and because London is such a kinky place I've just seem to have been uh, surrounded by people that are right. open-minded to kind of mm -hmm. that mentality as well as so. Where are you from originally? You just said that you, you changed the country. Where? So I was born in Toronto in mm -hmm. Canada. Um, hey, <laughs> 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 um, and, I, and I love Canada. Canada is a wonderful country. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm living in London now. So, so how was the transition uh, from Canada to UK? How was the cultural uh, adjustment? Um, because in Canada, I, I've met some Canadians, and yeah. they are wonderful people. Mm. British also, but it's like the, the there is a cultural difference. Absolutely, I, I think British people think that they're really polite, but they're not, <laughs> and that is something. Yeah. That, okay. <laughs> and I don't, I find that really interesting because Canadians are so much more polite, <laughs> and and for for yeah, me to be around British people that think that they are just mm -hmm. this really polite culture, and I'm just like. Oh, you guys have no idea what you're talking about. Because um, like customer service just really isn't important in Europe, mm -hmm. whereas in North America, customer service is extremely important. Right. Uh, that is one thing I, I'm definitely having a hard time adjusting to, is nobody really cares. And, and whereas in North America, I think um, just the, the way the workforce in general is, is um, like you get no vacation time mm -hmm. and, and you have to work when you're sick and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, that, yeah, it's, that, that's really been a struggle for me. What was the, the most challenging, after you moved, yeah. what was the most challenging thing that you had to face? Um, uh, well, as kinky as uh, the London scene is, which I absolutely love, um, it also uh, attracts a lot of provence. Mm -hmm. And uh, London is a very oversaturated market. And that was a reality check for me. So um, when you moved to London, you were already being a pro dom. Mm -hmm. You were already in the the lifestyle. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but um, it's a much more aggressive mm -hmm. um, in London. And and as a person, as an individual, what was it? Like uh, living uh, the professional. Uh, yes. Okay. On, on yeah. Side. Um. Again, because of this whole lack of um, customer service type thing, uh, you know, setting up a bank account and getting your national insurance number and, and just those kind of the bureaucracy. Yeah, and, and and it just it's like they don't want people to thrive. It, it was a it was a very um, interesting experience for me, and I actually it made me uh, actually quite feel for people that were more low income or didn't have English as a second language. I just can't even believe how they would navigate uh, that kind of stuff. Um, but luckily, because England is English speaking, like I, overall, as much as I kind of complained mm -hmm. about things, um, it really wasn't a horrible struggle. Like, like buying my my house was um, was uh, was interesting because England has these weird systems on how they do stuff, and everything's for solicitors to make money. They don't really care about the person that's actually buying or selling the house. Okay. And, and, but that again, all very piddly kind of small things, but they're all irritants as you're kind of dealing with whatever it is kind of as you're trying to establish your life. How how is um, let let's go back to the personal level if you if you agree. Yeah. Um, how is your family's perspective about your lifestyle, about your profession, about everything related to BDSM? Um they're open to it. Like I, I'm very, I'm very open about what I do. And when you started, did they knew yeah. or okay? Yeah, yeah. I like because I was in the goth scene. They always kind of knew I was a bit alternative, and it was kind of like not really a surprise. <laughs> like so not more finish. or less, they kind of correlated the goth scene with the BDS. Absolutely. Okay. Yes, absolutely. So, for example, so I, I don't necessarily tell my Nana that I'm going to a fetish party. I'll tell her I'm going to a goth party. Mm. And she still, 
she doesn't quite understand it, but she tries to be supportive kind of thing. It's very cute. <laughs> she'll, imagine. Yeah, she'll sometimes send me these links for like different festivals that she sees on Google or whatever. It's very sweet. It's really nice. Aww. It's really lovely. Yeah. Um, but overall, yeah, my, like my family knows. Um, they try to be supportive in their own way. <laughs> Um, but you know, if, if I have a milestone thing happen with my career, um, and I try to share it with them, mm -hmm. they don't necessarily know what to do with that information. Um, uh, or if like I'm complaining about all the crap with OnlyFans and that kind of stuff, they just kind of go, oh, well, that's too bad. Uh, and so then, different. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, but they don't, uh, they don't quite understand what is, what I'm really going through. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? It, it's kind of... Yeah, it's but until you're not uh, in there, you cannot fully understand. Yeah. You can imagine, yeah. but you cannot understand. No, no, yeah. What uh, you just mentioned, uh, the OnlyFans, um, what was the challenge? What adversities did you find or did you have to tolerate? Because it's not something that we can change relating no. to all the social media, unfortunately. Agreed. Um, relating with uh, all these social media platforms and all the platforms. I think my biggest frustration, and I think it also comes from a personal level, is like not being able to do what you want to do. <laughs> being told what you can and cannot um, uh, publish or whatever, um, you know, I just tried posting a video up on OnlyFans and there was a bit of breath play in it and they, they, they denied me doing that and it was so tame and it just, it was just, it's just those frustrating things that, you know, um, you want to be a kinky pervert and the, there's not really a lot of outlets that allow you to do that. Um, it, it's all, to me, it all get wrapped up in shame, you know, with like how the credit card companies deal with, deal with us. Like it's all. It's frustrating because the, the people that are making these rules, you know that they're out there enjoying these stuff. You, you know that they're out there doing that stuff. And they're, or not even if it's not necessarily kinky stuff, they are they're enjoying porn. Absolutely. Absolutely. 100%. And it's just, it's so, so frustrating. It's just so frustrating. And uh, do you feel uh, discriminated by, by this? Absolutely, 100%. Absolutely. They're making millions off of us mm -hmm. and then yet restricting what we can and cannot do. Like, it, it's just, it's so hypocritical and, and frustrating. Absolutely. It, it, they're completely benefiting from all the work and especially like clip stores where they're yes. taking 60% of our, our profits. Like, mm -hmm. are you serious? 60%? Like, and you're not, where else are you like to do that? doing that much. We are all also doing the... the the big work yes the heavy work absolutely all they're doing is providing a platform like that, that's all they're doing and maintaining it yes okay yes mm -hmm. yeah yeah but like look for clips for sale like i love clips for sale like i'm not totally knocking it but it's a very old platform yes. when, it, when it comes to navigating the platform to uploading all your mm -hmm. stuff like it's it's extremely old and, and they haven't updated it and what uh, platforms are you on um so clips for sale and i want clips mm -hmm. uh fat house as well i do fat okay. streaming um and then only fans and loyal fans okay mm -hmm. uh how do you find loyal fans um i find it just doesn't have the traffic that mm -hmm. that only fans does so um the platform's good in terms of uploading um it, it's user it's extremely user friendly um i like the referral platforms mm -hmm. that i have um, uh, I like that you don't have to provide model release forms for it. <laughs> uh, you have to have. Yes, yes. Just in case. Yes, but right. Like, but you don't need to. There, uh, you don't need to upload all the, the, the their IDs and, mm -hmm. and all that for it. it just, it's less administrative um, work right. that you need to do. Um, but uh, yeah, I just unfortunately doesn't have the traffic that OnlyFans does, and and that's my like that's that's my biggest struggle uh, with it. But uh, it is very user friendly to use, which is which is great. Uh, are you only uh, a pro dom? Are you only doing uh, lifetime, uh, real time uh, um, sessions, or are you also filming? Or tell me a little bit uh, more about your activity. Okay. Uh, so real time is my passion. That's what I prefer to be doing. I enjoy the one on one mm -hmm. interaction with a, a human 
thing. <laughs> Not to compare. <laughs> um, but um, I also do enjoy doing clips as well. Um, I, I, I tend to, when I do clips, it's more about me and the, and the sun misses that I'm playing with and then there's the video mm -hmm. camera in the background. Um, I do have the, the, the membership sites, but I, I'm not as uh, aggressive with it um, because I don't necessarily, pref I, uh, for me, online is, is uh, an afterthought. Mm -hmm. uh, the real time is, is more my, my passion. Are you considering yourself a successful woman? Yes. Overall, what yes. is success for you? Happiness. Okay, <laughs> then what is happiness for you? Um, uh, what is happiness for me? I, I am able to do most things that I want to do in my life, mm -hmm. um, or day to day. Um, I live very comfortably, um, and uh, I, I'm, a lot, I, I'm able to have kink in my life on a very regular basis, which I think is wonderful. Um, I'm able to come to progress, and then and they're like, oh, just being able to be here to me is all, all that kind of stuff is wonderful. I, I'm not left wanting, and I think that's that's really important. I have a lot of uh, free time um, to be able to do the things that I enjoy. <laughs> While I do enjoy kink, right. I think that's uh, an aspect of my life. There are other aspects of my mm -hmm. life, and I'm able to um, really enjoy them rather than have them fleeting. Like, right. uh, oh, I was able to take one day off here or, or one day off here. Like, uh, I'm able to take. Good Even though uh, what many don't know, and when they are looking uh, at our uh, activity, they think it's like ah, it's super easy. Oh, but no, it's, it's not easy. It's <laughs> tons of work. Absolutely. And it's a Absolutely. lot of uh, sometimes sleepless nights Absolutely. and sometimes uh, like um, against the clock work and run and traveling all over for for some of us yeah. um how do you manage all this activity do you have people that are helping you or you're just by yourself and taking care of one woman business like i like to say <laughs> um I, I do have a pa um he helps me with uh editing and uploading um uh, those are probably mm -hmm. the two things that i enjoy the least so mm -hmm. i try to outsource it um, but I'm always the one that's like answering messages on, on like loyal fans and that mm -hmm. kind of thing or emails and that kind of yeah. stuff. Um, and then obviously doing the sessions mm -hmm. and that kind of thing and, and, you know, um, being creative and figuring out, you know, what, what scenes am I going to do for my next clips and, and that kind of stuff. Um, but I do try to outsource the things that I don't necessarily enjoy because it's very difficult to do it all. Like it really what is. is a deal breaker for you? Uh, and I want to know on the uh, professional side and also on a personal side. Okay. What is a deal breaker? Uh, like, what do you mean, like deal breaker? What do you consider deal breaker? Uh, so, like, as in, not wouldn't um, have take them as a client. Take mm -hmm. them. Um, so I have a very. Um, diligent contact form <laughs> and uh, for me uh, someone that gives me a lot of information during mm -hmm. those forms uh, I find that a huge positive so people that give one word answers or are uh, not open to um, to being ex to, 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 to communicating actually communication is mm -hmm. probably my biggest my biggest deal breaker if you're not willing okay. to communicate then that is that's probably a deal breaker personally how and professionally. important do you would you say that communication is within the bdsm aspect or kinky aspect one million one hundred percent like communication to me is everything mm -hmm. like uh no no one can read your mind right and vice versa right. um i think I love getting into people's heads. So again, communication is what allows you to do that. Um, oh, it's, communication is so, 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 so important. <laughs> um, now, um, I would like to, uh, if it's possible for you to give an advice to women out there, from you as a woman, from you as a professional dominatrix, what advice would you give them? <sighs> There's that voice inside of you that wants to do or explore, or be whatever, even if it's a tiny one. Um, listen to it. Your, your gut is is what's going to drive you to be the the most uh, amazing woman that you can be, and that gut is 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 right. And um, don't listen to anybody else. <laughs> and what about men? Men. <laughs> 
don't assume, educate yourself, um, put the time in, don't think with this, think with this. Wow, <laughs> that, that, you nailed it. Sometimes they tend to do that, Absolutely. don't they? Yeah. Uh, how, how do you interact with this kind of man? I just generally don't, or I'm very reluctant to. Yeah, well, um, yeah, like there's just certain times where you get communication from mm -hmm. men that are like that, and you can just tell that they're behind the screen enjoying themselves. And I, I just generally don't. Uh, kind of yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, I just have no interest. If there would be a, a thing that uh, people would um, associate you with, what would you like that thing to be? Probably. When 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 they when someone uh, would be to think about you to associate you with exactly a thing a thought of what probably latex that's probably yeah that's probably so when you say Lady Valeska to associate with latex they're gonna think oh, black latex that's it you <laughs> have a specific brand of latex we're not making commercial <laughs> personal preference um I've actually really um uh, really been enjoying Simon O's katsu so those are my Right now, my my, my favorite. Um, okay. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And as your legacy, what would that? Uh, what would you like to be? <sighs> like, like for for people that have look that are looking back on me and that. Kind of, um, I, I I actually really like to pride myself in giving uh, people an open space to be who they are in their kinky, <laughs> wonderful, perverted self, and and I'd like that to be my legacy of. Um, someone that allowed them to be um, themselves. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So beautiful. Oh, and I would like to end the interview with this on this note, because I think after this, there we can talk for so, so yes. long, but unfortunately <laughs> time is, is running short. And I want on this note of being who you are to, to end up this, this interview. Thank you very much for accepting my, my invitation. Thank you very much for being in my studio Absolutely. and Thank for, for having having, me. letting them um, know a little bit more about you because sometimes um, what we put out there is not 100% of what we are. We are much more than just a picture, than just an image, than just a name. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. So thank you uh, also for watching this, this episode. I hope you already subscribed to my channel and uh, see you next time on another uh, very interesting conversation. Thank, <laughs> thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Bye now. Bye.